Hi everybody, I'm Lucas and in this video I'm going to demonstrate the new track presets feature in Studio One version 6, which many users have waited for over the last years. Previously you needed a couple of workarounds to get a track preset-like behavior, like using song data import or music loops. Those days are over and I'm very very glad to see track presets now being added in Studio One version 6. You may have already noticed that we now have a track presets folder in the browser, in both the instruments tab and in the effects tab. And that's where we already find the factory track presets. There are a couple of really useful ones like a preset for beats and vocals with a ready to use impact drum kit for beat programming and a track with a channel strip designed for vocal production. You already see these insert effects and also some sense. And here you can see that there's some sidechain going on. But the best of this is that the most important parameters of all these plugins can be tweaked in a nice consolidated macro controls view. Just click here on the channel numbers to open the channel editor window and then select macro controls. And here you have a selection of parameters from the EQ, the new version 6 DSer. And the same we get for the drum kit, with some distortion, filter, EQ and compression. So these macro control views are really great shortcut to get started. And that was just one of the track presets. There's also a track preset for the new vocoder plugin in Studio One 6. That's very useful for everyone who doesn't want to mess around with all the routing of a vocoder with the instrument and the audio track, so you can just start playing vocoder. Or the analog drums, which is a whole bank of analog drum sounds made exclusively with Mai Tai. Or of course, if you record real drums or guitars, you should take a look at the track presets in the effects tab. Or let's just take a look at the track presets for guitar. And here are the macro controls. So you see a lot of effort has been put into these factory track presets. And by the way, if you don't have the browser open, you can still load track presets if you right click and select load track preset. So that's loading track presets. But I'm sure some of you are way more interested in creating your own track presets. Let me open one of my orchestra projects. Here I'd like to store some of the tracks as track presets. For doing so, I only need to right click on the track and choose store track preset. And here I can enter a name for the preset. I don't need a description and the subfolder should be strings. And when I click OK, the track preset is saved and shows up in my strings folder inside of the track presets. But since this is Studio One, there's always a faster way to do that and this is of course via drag and drop. Let me just save the violas and the cellos as well by just opening the folder in the browser and dragging the tracks into this folder. So this makes creating track presets pretty easy. You can also drag the tracks into the track presets folder and move them to the right folders later. Because you can now freely drag presets between folders, which is another new feature in Studio One 6. And if you want to create a track preset directly in a certain folder, but you still want to name it properly, then you can drag the track into the browser while you hold down Ctrl or Command on Mac. This will open the dialog, but with the correct folder already entered. Track presets store everything that's relevant to a track, including track color, track delay, effects, and which is really useful, the bus routing. So if I open a new empty song template with some buses for orchestra, strings and so forth, and I drag this track preset into my song, as you can see, Studio One knows that this track was routed to the strings bus so if there's a strings bus in our new song as well, it will be automatically connected to that bus. Before I show you the last two great things about track presets, let me invite you to subscribe to my channel if you like my videos. And of course, if you find this video helpful, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. 
Imagine you like to create track presets for a whole drum kit or for a whole string section. Of course, this is possible as well by just selecting all tracks that I want and then grab one of them and drag it into the browser. Here it makes sense to give it a meaningful name, for example, string section. But this works with audio tracks just as well. For example, if you make an album and you want to use the same drum kit with its entire routing, insert and send effects in several songs of this production. Instead of using song data import, you can save these tracks as a track preset and reuse it whenever you need. Or for the sample library users, if you use a multi-track approach for your articulations, even with the same instance, like in this contact preset I've made. When I go into the browser and I select this minimalist violence preset, I see there's legato, tenuto and the harmonics. So I can track this preset into my song and I get one contact instance with three tracks, legato, tenuto and harmonics, each on its own track, but with different MIDI channel numbers. And one last thing that's very useful if you want to use keyboard shortcuts or macro buttons to load your favorite track presets. For example, if you have a stream deck and you want to create buttons for different track presets you often use. So let's create a button, right click, assign and new macro. And here just enter load track to find the load track preset command. And here we have our name argument that we can use to enter, for example, my minimalist cellos. And now we have created a custom macro for these cellos. And if you want, you can go into the keyboard shortcuts and assign a key to that macro and add this key to your stream deck to recall the cellos. That's it for the track presets. I hope you found that helpful and I hope we see you again in the next video. Thanks for watching.